Today, we're going to talk about a few things to help you get started, uh, to help you feel that you know how to navigate um, the healthcare system and some other information that you may need during your stay here at the university. My name is Kristin Kleiberg. I'm working with the International Desk and the Orientation Weeks. And my name is Maria Yaritseva, and I also work at International Desk and with Arrival Weeks and Orientation Weeks. We have with us some uh, other guests. So we would like to introduce uh, Marlin. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Marlin, and I'm a psychological counselor uh, working at the Student Health Center. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> yes, we also have with us uh, Kusha. Hi, my name is Kusha, and I also work at Student Health Center, and I'm employed as a clinical psychologist. And we have a colleague, Jan. Uh, hi, my name is Jan. I'm a student chaplain here at Lund University. Yes, so welcome. Welcome, everyone, and welcome to our uh, guest panelists as well. Uh, to start off, we just want to inform where you can find uh, information about health and well-being. Uh, so you can find uh, information on our website at Lund University uh, main website, and you can go under the tab current students, and then you can find information about health and well-being. You can also find information on the orientation guide on Canvas. Uh, you've gotten a link in uh, an email from International Desk from last week, and you've also been invited with your student account. So when you log into Canvas, you should be able to see it on your dashboard, among other courses. Uh, you will also find information and updates on the International Desk's Facebook web page. Uh, and you can also uh, message the International Desk on Facebook via Messenger. And you can also contact the International Desk uh, by calling or emailing uh, or joining us via Zoom or coming for a physical visit. And you can ask questions about both health and well being and also other uh, questions as well. And if you have any questions uh, regarding academic matters, uh, please contact your coordinator or department at Lund University. Uh, so some of the numbers that uh, you should keep track of is the emergency number. Uh, so for emergencies, you can call uh, 112, and then you will be able to contact ambulance, police, and the fire department for emergencies. Uh, and if you are on Lund campus and you feel unsafe, for example, if you're staying in a classroom late at night or you feel in generally unsafe on campus, we have uh, security officers on campus that you can call. And the number for that is 146-222-0700. And if you have an LU student card, uh, you can find the information and the contact number on the backside of your card. Um, and uh, you can call them for issues like, as I said, unauthorized people, or if you feel unsafe, if you've experienced theft or threats, if you lost your key, or if you lost your access card outside of office hours and you can't get in. Uh, you can also find more information on our website uh, at svvv.lu.se slash emergency. Right, uh, we would like to go over some of the COVID-19 safety, safety discussions and uh, how things are changing and looking at the moment. Generally speaking, um, stay at home if you have any mild symptoms at all. If you have any symptoms, please stay home. Uh, you should also then get tested for COVID even if you are vaccinated. If you, do not, if you have a Swedish personal identification number, this can be done um, online through www. 1177.se. Uh, if you do not have a personal identification number, you can contact the healthcare centers directly to have help with that. Also, generally speaking, please just keep your hands uh, washed uh, with soap and water and hand sanitizer. Um, keep distance from everyone as much as possible. Um, it's generally a good idea to avoid too many crowded places. And most importantly, above everything else, we are, have provided links to the governmental authorities and other healthcare authorities where we would like you to always look to, to keep updated on what the recommendations are. They're changing quite quickly and it's hard for us to keep you informed in, in a good time. So it's important that you keep yourself informed. 
So as we said, how to stay updated, there are several site links that we've sent both in emails to you and that are on the orientation guide to Lund University. So please keep, con keep a close look on those. You can even, of course, uh, bookmark them and look at them again and again without having to go back to those websites. There are some other great places to look on the Lund University webpage. We have some frequently asked questions and we try to keep those as updated as possible. Uh, the local.se is a private newspaper, but it provides uh, Swedish news in English. So things about different updates, they have a great overview of how, uh, how the situation in Sweden looks and provides English information. The public health agency website, they're the ones responsible for the public health in Sweden. So they give the different recommendations and they also control 1177, which is the healthcare line. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Also, the university and the international desk uh, are here to try and help you if you have any other questions. If you need to get tested, you have to contact a healthcare center directly. Otherwise, if you have a personal identification number, you can use this website, www.1177.se, and register and book an appointment yourself. Questions about vaccinations. There's a great uh, number we have been provided. So you can call your, that number uh, on the screen, 0771-320-320. You may have to listen to kind of these, uh, these choices, press one, press two. So please listen to the entire message. Uh, you may also have to leave your name and number to be called back. If you have an international number, make sure you indicate that. Um, but any other questions about vaccinations, how the COVID passes work, how um, the EU pass works, please post those questions to this number. If you do develop symptoms, uh, as we've said before, please stay at home, avoid contact with other people. And um, if you have to go grocery shopping, things like that, please do so very sparingly and only by essentials to try and reduce contact as much as possible. If you can help, get help to get groceries and things like that, then that is recommended. If you can't manage on your own, call 1177. It's a free number, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we ha they have uh, nurses uh, that answer questions directly. If it's very bad, please call 112 and the emergency services will come. Now we'll leave the word over to Marlon and Koshu. Thank you. Uh, I think you can uh, change the slide directly there, Kristen. Okay, so um, we all know that moving to a new place, a new country can be fun and exciting, uh, but also stressful and uh, overwhelming at times. And one place you can turn to for counseling and mental health support is the Student Health Center. And uh, we primarily work with psychological issues that affect your ability to study, uh, such as stress, anxiety, depression, uh, transitional issues, and academic difficulties. Um, and this in addition to other public and private healthcare clinics uh, that uh, provide medical, uh, general medical issues, um, sexual health and contraception. Okay, so next slide. Um, as well as individual counseling, we offer a variety of courses and group meetings and seminars, open seminars uh, in useful skills. For example, um, stress management. Uh, we have a procrastination group that runs weekly. We also have a metacognitive group therapy. Um, uh, so please check out our website for the current course selection and more information. Um, yeah, so maybe next slide. Unmute myself, there we go. Okay, so um, our team consists of psychologists, counselors, and nurses, and, and a doctor as of late. Uh, and we also have a, a medical secretary and also a manager. And uh, we maintain strict confidentiality uh, according to Swedish healthcare law. 
And uh, according to law, we also have to keep medical records. These medical records are not shared uh, with the, the greater public health. Uh, they are internal. And uh, you find us in the vicinity of uh, Lundagor uh, and Oathboyen uh, Dead Center in, in Lund. Uh, and the address is Sangotan Trier. And you can also visit our website for more information on uh, how to find us and so on. Um, what is also good to know during these circumstances is that we transition to a more uh, digital format. Uh, usually when we are not in a pandemic, uh, we see uh, our students face to face, whether that's through individual contacts or through group seminars or group courses. Um, but uh, during these times uh, and how the situation is looking right now, uh, we, are, uh, we are perfectly in a transition to uh, manage basically everything through digital platforms. Next slide, please. Um, so the Swedish healthcare system is financed by social insurance, and this provides all citizens with a subsidized healthcare. Um, and there are both public and private providers of healthcare. Um, and if you have obtained a Swedish personal identity number uh, or uh, are a holder of a European health insurance card, you are entitled to healthcare. Um, at the standard patient fee, which is approximately about 100 to 300 crowns. Next slide, please. Okay, so you already heard that the uh, Swedish Healthcare Guide 1177 is important. Um, it provides you uh, with medical advice and uh, on care and, and illnesses, um, and you can either log in to uh, 1177.se or call the number 1177. And uh, calls are answered by a registered nurse 24 hours uh, a day. Uh, and you can also, when you call the number, you can choose to uh, receive the advice in English. And from um, international, if you call from an international um, phone number uh, or a phone registered in another country, then you, um, you have plus 46 double seven triple one double seven double O in the end. Um, okay, so when you log into 1177, there's, um, it's called Vård Guiden in Swedish, and it has a useful search tool um, under Hitta Vård. Um, find care, uh, where you can find locations of uh, different health centers, and it's called Vård Central, so GP, General Practitioner Vård Central, um, but also other uh, locations like out of hours clinics uh, or hospitals, and I think also dental care um, providers. Um, so I think it, it's good to just browse and uh, find your way, have a look at 1177. Um, okay, so next slide there. So if you, if you require care, but you're not acutely ill, you should contact your um, health center, the GP, what we call Vård Central. And health centers um, are generally the, the first our, the first port of call uh, for problems that are uh, neither urgent nor life threatening, and they are staffed by general practitioners and nurses. Uh, sometimes it's uh, physical therapists, midwives, psychologists, counselors, dietitians. Um, and you can basically receive treatment for the majority of, of um, uh, general conditions. And um, once you have uh, a Swedish personal identity number, you can register at a local health center. Uh, you can choose, you're free to choose any center. Um, and most uh, health centers are open daily um, weekdays between eight and five. 
uh, and you book an appointment um, by calling the reception, um, preferably early in the morning, and uh, you may have to leave your number and they will phone you back. Uh, you can also log in, if you're re registered, you can log in to 1177 with your bank ID, but you probably don't have that yet, but uh, that is also a way to, to book a, uh, an appointment. Uh, but I think if you have questions um, how to book and so on, I think I would recommend to call 1177 to, to speak to a nurse and get uh, guidance. Yeah. Do you want to go, Kusha? Yeah, sure. Uh, so as 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 uh, previously stated, uh, in case of an emergency, you should call uh, one one two, and it doesn't matter what kind of emergencies, and this includes, uh, of course, uh, healthcare emergencies. Uh, but you could also visit the hospital's emergency department, which is called Akut Mutoningen in Swedish, and they operate twenty four hours a day, and. Uh, regarding uh, any psychological or uh, psychiatric conditions, uh, there are emergency clinics uh, that operate in our region, Region Skåne, and they also operate um, uh, on a 24-7 basis. And um, you could also dial 112 in case of a psychiatric emergency situation. Uh, so they have a psychiatric emergency clinic in Lund, in Malmö, and in Helsingborg. Yeah. Mm. And in Lund, it's at Bollevägen, uh, quite close uh, to the big hospital. And in Helsingborg, it is situated in Carolina Widerstamsgata 10. Yeah, it's also close to the hospital. Thank you so much. Then I think we will go a little bit into other health information. Yes. Um, so a lot of things are included in the general health. Uh, two things that it might be good to know are not included in uh, in the at the healthcare centers are dental and vision. These are private, so it, it can be perhaps a little bit expensive, um, relatively speaking, depending on where you are from. If you uh, if you need some care, of course you can book an appointment with uh, both uh, for for eye checkups or for new glasses, things like that, uh, at um, some of these stores, these eyeglass stores, um, <clears throat> or you can and for dentists as well. Pharmacies are also privatized, but if you have other questions, uh, small questions about what kind of medicine might be right for you for the different symptoms you have. Um, of course, you can ask 1177, but you can also ask the pharmacists who are educated in how to recommend, recommend the pr right product for you. Another um, health-related uh, organization that might be interesting to know that is uh, an organization at Lund University is called Project Sex, also called P6. Uh, so they are, it's a student organization that promotes sexual health or physical, emotional, or social levels. And they provide information about sexual and reproductive health. They offer free condoms and they also of, offer support, support uh, in these questions. So uh, you can find them on Facebook or on their website. Yes, uh, so there are different types of insurance depending on which type of student you are. European students have most likely an EHIC card, we call it, a European health insurance card. If you do need to visit um, a healthcare center or the emergency room or anything like that, it's good to have that card with you. Uh, that way you can pay the same fees as, uh, as what we would pay in Sweden with a, with a person number, a Swedish personal identification number. Um, if you're a non-EU citizen and you have uh, tuition, you pay tuition to come here, then you have a different insurance called FAS Plus, F-A-S Plus. Uh, the terms and conditions are on our website, and that's the best place to look at what you're covered for. A good thing to know if you're a FAS Plus student is to save all your receipts. Um, if you have questions about then how to make claims, please contact your program coordinator or exchange studies coordinator. Um, if you are not an EU citizen, but you're not paying fees, every student at the university is covered by something called student in insurance. 
You can also find the terms and conditions on our website. Um, in any case, it's also good if you visit a healthcare center or anything, you can save your receipts and check if you can get some money back. Now we'd like to welcome Jan. Okay, hi everyone. As I said before, uh, my name is Jan Schellström. And in the previous picture that just flashed in front of you, uh, you could see the cathedral here in Lund, uh, which is where I work. Uh, it's the oldest building here in town, and actually the most of Lund was built around this place, and actually the university started also in this cathedral. Um, if there won't be, um, if the restrictions are uh, lightened, there might be guided tours that I do for students later on this spring. You can uh, find information about that on the international desks. Uh, newsletter or their Facebook page. And there is also a service in English uh, every Sunday at five if you're interested in that. But mainly I'm here to talk about another thing and you can switch the slide again now. Uh, I know from experience that for some of you, you come from backgrounds where faith and spirituality is an important part of your everyday life. And finding a place to worship or a community to belong to here in Lund might be very high on your agenda when you come here. To help you with that, we have founded something here in Lund called the Multi-Faith Chaplaincy, which is a network and a collaboration between different uh, religious entities and different churches here in Lund. Uh, and then on the next slide, which is coming up, uh, you can see some of our partners here. Uh, which are working together. Uh, you have, you see me live, so my name is on the top there, but we also have representatives from the Catholic Church, the Pentecostal Church, we have an imam, a rabbi, and a Buddhist representative. If you don't find what you're looking for in this picture here, you can contact me, and I will be sort of your religious detective, looking for whatever you want to find. Uh, I, usually I can help most people to find what they're looking for. So don't hesitate to contact me if you need help with anything like this. Uh, also important to say is that this is a service for those of you who already have a, a faith when you come here. We don't do any kind of mission work or anything. We don't want to make you a religious person or anything. This is strictly a service for those of you who need help and already have faith. But now, as having said that, uh, we can go to the next slide um, because now those of you who also don't consider yourself to be re religious can start listening because the other part of my, uh, of my work is to be there also if you need someone to talk to. And we all know that in life, uh, lots of things can happen. Uh, bad things happen to good people or uh, yeah, sometimes in life shit happens to put it bluntly. Uh, and if you need someone to talk to them, it can be about like, you know, my parent back home is in hospital. I'm really worried and I'm half the way away. Uh, my boyfriend broke up with me when I'm here. Um, somebody died back home. I don't really know what I'm doing here and I feel lost in everything. If you have questions like that, you're welcome to contact me for to talk. Uh, it's absolutely free. Uh, it's totally confidential to talk to me. And, and we will always, always, always uh, only talk about what you want to talk about. It's you who set the agenda. Um, but if you need someone to talk to and you feel like it's difficult here, you're welcome to contact me. Um, yeah, I think that's amazing. And the last slide, uh, I think there is the contact information for me. Uh, you can find me on the web page, contact me by email or telephone, or you can actually just walk into the cathedral also and ask for me and they will direct you in the right direction. Uh, the picture of a strange looking building here is actually where I have my office is next to the cathedral. So uh, having said that, I just want to wish, wish you all good luck and hope you have a nice day here in Lund. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Right.
Now we have uh, another uh, guest uh, we'd like to introduce. Uh, Jesper, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, this is awesome. my name is Jesper. I work as a firefighter here in Lund. And uh, as Jan so promptly said, this uh, sometimes shit happens. And this is perhaps we'll, when we'll be seeing each other. But we can skip ahead these are a couple of pictures to, because I want to show the best part about being a firefighter. Uh, maybe one back. There we, there we have it. In case of a fire, always call 112. It's totally free. These are, there's no. If you if you feel that uh, these are, if you feel that you need help in some kind of way, these are, these are, call 112. Because these are, if they don't feel at alarm uh, uh, at SOS that these are your emer your particular need of help isn't an emergency, they would just direct you to someone who can help you in another way. But in case of in case of a fire, this is where you call. In case of somebody getting ill, this is where you call. If this uh, somebody harasses you in the street, this is where you call. Th th this is the best part because, uh, as I was saying, this uh, the phone number one one two goes to a lot of places. It goes to the police. It goes to the ambulance. It goes to us. But we're not the same organization, and the easiest way to make sure that this, uh, who am I meeting today because sometimes when, when we show up in uniforms this, uh, it can be a little bit hard to know this, uh, is this a police officer this, uh, or is this a fireman this, uh, if there's any kind of doubt when the big red truck comes driving in this, uh, that's the fire department that's when you when you'll be seeing me and this is actually a uh, an old picture. This, uh, this is our old truck. So the new one is even bigger and it's even redder, if you could believe it. And a lot of people think that, okay, so may and this, uh, maybe I won't uh, have anything to do with the fire department during my uh, study period in Lund or in Sweden. But I can assure you that in one way or another, because you're students, I'm going to meet you not just here. So we can take the next slide and I hope it, it will be in order. This has, this has never happened this, uh, in Lund. This is maybe you know in Malmo or Denmark this, uh, because we're so much better at our jobs this, uh, here in Lund. So you don't have to worry about, about this, no, knock on wood. This is not what we want happening. And this is actually part of why I'm talking to you today. Um, usually when we have these information, information meetings in person, this I have the opportunity to this, uh, bring forth an, a really old 90s video about this uh, from when they set fire to a room and they start to time how fast it is uh, from, maybe they drop a candle in a sofa or something until the, room is completely burnt out and it's important and that's going to transition into our next slide and you can maybe push forward that there, there's supposed to be some thank you because in that in that video this is you can see about a minute into into it that it takes about a minute this uh, for the smoke to trigger a smoke alarm. And this is like the basis of everything here in Sweden, that everyone should have a smoke alarm in their home, at least one. And this is actually not just a rule, it's also a law because it doesn't really matter where you live, if you live in a student accommodation or if you rent in a, a private apartment or wherever you live, is that, you ha there, there's a law saying that you have to have a smoke alarm. And if you're living in a student accommodation or a rented place, it's your landlord that has to provide that you provide a smoke alarm and install it into your home. But here's the tricky part. We can take the next picture. It's your responsibility as the user of an apartment to make sure that the smoke alarm is working. That means that and that's not 
a huge thing. There's, a, there's usually a small button on them there's a, that says test. And a, you just push it, and it's, there's a, you are, it's not possible to make a mistake. If it's working, it's working. And a lot of students that I meet these are dur during usually late nights here in Lund. These are, they usually tell me that these are, I know that these are, my smoke alarm is working because these are, I've triggered it so many times cooking food. So we're usually we're these are, these are, it's easy to make the joke that maybe we shouldn't have an, uh, an information about these are, how to prevent fires, maybe we should just have like a cooking class for students. And I think that could serve just as well. If somehow this, uh, you should you push the test button on your smoke alarm this, uh, and it doesn't work, usually it's just a nine volt battery this, uh, that needs to be changed. And the, those you can find at your average this, uh, grocery store or wherever. And they're not, and they're cheap so, and, this, uh, and they're, so you just, now these are install a new battery and you're and you're fine. Usually, when we have bigger fires, these are it's because of because that someone these are, hasn't checked their smoke alarm because they just kind of automatically automatically think that it works when they move in uh, this, uh, and then maybe you move out after a year and then a new student comes in, these uh, doesn't check the smoke alarm because they think that oh maybe they'll then. The person before me checked it. Is that? But this is our most common fire, and this is where you come in. I usually meet all the students in Lund, and also a lot of you know, like the regular Swedish people. They're not better at this, but the students kind of stand out. This is usually when it happens in student corridors. Late, and this, uh, late at night or very early in the morning, depending on this, uh, your point of view. And, and it all, almost always includes some kind of drinking of alcohol. And I know that a lot of you, maybe you haven't, you came here to study, but you also came here to have fun. And I encourage you to have fun, but I encourage you to have the kind of fun that doesn't set fire to a building. And this is usually what happens. Is that I've I've met so many students so many times. Is that because they they come home late at night or early in the morning is, after a party. Is that they oh, maybe maybe some French fries, maybe something before I go to bed. And I'm sorry to say, but you're just drunk out of your mind. Is that you can't cook while is that while drinking. That should be a Almost this are as clear as not drinking and driving. You should cook and drive. Because 90% of you, this are, you've had, have, had a good, good night. You're going to fall asleep this are before the food is done. And then you forget it on the stove. And it looks like this. And that's the next and this. And when you wake up, you'll see my face. This are, but I won't look as pleased as I do right now. I'll have a much more stern face with me. I, this, I, I've been told by friends that I have my casual voice and, and that I have my fireman's voice. And you, you will be hearing the fireman's voice, this, uh, which is a lot more stern and a lot more direct. I know, I know that this, uh, a lot of, some of you might think that this, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm a controlled person when I drink. This, uh, I'm, I'm not the one to get super drunk. But I don't know if it's the Swedish people that, that are teaching you this, but after a while, this, uh, all students just become raging party animals. This, uh, and I'm not holding that against you. This, uh, that, that's your right. The, and I, I encourage you, you, to, you to have fun while you're here. But again, a fun, a fun way this, this, uh, that doesn't set fire to buildings that have to wake me up in the middle of the night is uh, to come driving to you. I should mention this that we work twenty and we work twenty four hours a day every day of the year. There's always firefighters these are present in Lund these are, and we are really good at our jobs, so we will handle this kind of fire almost immediately. But in case of a bigger fire, 
and we can move on to the next slide. If the, this, uh, maybe it's not always you who caused the fire, maybe it's your neighbor. And this, uh, you always know the neighbor, either you love them or you hate them. That's totally up to you, but I encourage you to talk to them if, and if you have any problems. But this, uh, maybe it's not, and this, uh, you've done everything you, you could possibly do. You've checked your smoke alarm, it, it functions. You're not these are cooking while, while under the influence. These are, and you've gone to bed in a clean way. You have even folded your clothes up and everything for the next day. But these are, then you wake up and it's the smoke alarm is up from maybe your neighbors or an adjacent floor or something. Always call 112. It's never wrong to call 112 if you hear a smoke alarm, even if you don't see the smoke or if you don't see the see the fire. It's always okay to call and say, I hear a smoke alarm, and then we will come to check it out. Never put yourself in any kind of danger. I would rather meet you all out in the street, pointing me in the right direction of which apartment that I am supposed to go to than to come in and to carry all of you out. But say that you wake up in the middle of the night and, then this, and you go out into your corridor and this is what you see. This, yeah, this is very important. We don't ever want you to enter a smoke-filled area. If it's, in, if it's not your apartment that's on, fi that's on fire, go into, and you go out into the cor corridor and see this, go back into your apartment again and close the door is that because the way that apartments are being built is that in Sweden, you're safe from the fire for at least you know, for at least 30 minutes. And as I said before, we are always work, working here. This how we're always on on call. We this are from when we get an alarm here to, at the station, we have 90 seconds to respond this, or to to be inside the cars and on our way to you. And we're really good at we know all the addresses, we know all we know everything, all the small streets is that we will be with you in less than 10 minutes. Is and then we will come to get get you from your apartment is that if you need to if you need to evacuate. This is actually everything that I'm going to ask of you. And Tisa, the, the police Tisa, might have a lot of rules that they want you to follow. I encourage you to, to listen to them. But Tisa, in, ca in case of fire prevention, Tisa, the best thing you can do for me is to not cook, well, and Tisa, cook and drink at the same time. If you do, do it responsibly. And I usually tell... Um, and I usually tell all the students that there's a, there's a life hack to this that makes sure that you don't never have to meet me in the middle of the night with my stern fireman's voice telling you what did I say. And it's and this, uh, the thing that's, this, uh, that's really good and really available in Lund is falafel. We have a lot of falafel in this, in this town. This, uh, it's really cheap and it's really good. So it's going to save your life one night it's, uh, when you're at the home from a, from a nation party or whatever. And you're thinking, I have, it's, uh, yeah, I have, have, some, have a burger at home. Buy a falafel instead. It's, go, it's going to, and to get you home safe. So to, uh, as a reminder, make sure that you have a sm working smoke alarm in your, in your home. It's your responsibility to make sure that it works. If you don't have one, tell your landlord this, uh, they will have to come this, uh, and put one up. I encourage you to have, have as much fun as you want, but do it in a responsible way. And hopefully, this, uh, you won't have to see me this, uh, in the middle of the night telling you I told you so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesper. <laughs> Sorry for the confusion with the slides. <laughs> So actually, this concludes our health and safe, health health and well being seminar. Uh, we thank you all for listening. We will take some questions now, but we want to let you know um, this seminar, the general information seminar, 
And a couple other pre-recorded seminars will be on the Canvas course, Orientation Guide to the University. And we will put up a quiz shortly in, uh, in January, on the 24th of January. So you have time to look at the films. And after the quiz, we'll have um, three winners. Based, uh, we'll, we'll let you know the details of the quiz and how to answer the questions and the timeline and time dates. And, and then we'll have three winners so you can win um, some fun LU stuff. Yes. Um, so we go to yeah. some questions. Yes. So we have um, a question here that says, where can I buy COVID tests to test myself with if I feel some symptoms? Um, so you can, if you have a personal number, uh, you can go to 1177, their website, and order one online. If you do not have a personal number, you can go to the pharmacy and buy one. Um, and there is, uh, at the international desk, someone asked that you can pick up a test and whether that self-test is uh, one that you can get a certificate through. No, we have, at the international desk, we have a self-test, but they are take-at-home tests. So they will only indicate whether you're okay or whether you need to, uh, or they will show an error, which means that you either have COVID or you need to go and get an actual PCR test. So the tests that we give out at the international desk are not PCR tests, they're take-at-home tests. Um, if you feel you need one and you have those symptoms, you can also come and pick one up. Um, and we have questions about vaccinations uh, and whether or not uh, there will be offering booster shots. So we kindly ask you to uh, direct all of your questions regarding vaccinations to the number that we mentioned before. That number is also, you can find it on Canvas under COVID-19 information and vaccination. Uh, so all questions regarding vaccinations, please contact that number. And for questions that seem to be all for now. Yeah. Um, so we can uh, finish this session. Yes. So we'd like to say a big thank you to our, uh, our guest uh, panelists. Thank you all so much for helping us to inform the students and, uh, and let them know about the different services and great information. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, and no more questions. So thank you and have a great day.